Most of us uh, older turners started with stone wheels for sharpening wood turning tools such as this aluminum oxide. But in recent years more and more turners have been turning to uh, CBN wheels or cubic boron nitride. Uh, CBN is almost as hard as, as a diamond. Uh, I've been using CBN wheels for more than 10 years and I want to share with you my experience and give you my, uh, my advice on, on the best, best grit for a wood, tur wood turner the best size and the best profile, whether square or, or radius. So if there's something you're interested in, keep watching. Aluminum oxide wheels work. Uh, they're what most, uh, as I mentioned, what most of us uh, start with, and they're the wheels that typically come installed on a, on a grinder. I used aluminum oxide wheels, uh, coarse and, and, and finer grit, typically uh, 60 and 120 grit. Uh, for years before I upgraded to cubic boron nitride wheels. If you're a new turner on a limited budget and you've been spraying money uh, out of the uh, wood turning fire hose for, for a lathe and, and a bandsaw and a chainsaw and a sharpening system and a, and a, and a grinder and finishing supplies, and, um, you can hold off on buying a CBN wheel. They're, they're not essential, but let me tell you and let me explain why a CBN wheels will put a smile on your face when you sharpen it. CBN wheels have been used uh, in industrial applications for many years, but only the last 10 or 15 years has it become uh, popular with, with wood turners. Uh, I started with a, a, a 180 grit CBN wheel I purchased from a popular uh, vendor, and then just a year later I bought a uh, 80 grit wheel from an, another popular vendor who really got a really good price point, got the prices down, and it really led to a huge conversion of wood turners uh, switching to CBN wheels. CBN wheels are, are machined uh, out of a big chunk of aluminum or a big chunk of, of steel. I'll talk more about that, uh, that, that later. But they're, they're dynamically balanced so they'll run true so your, your uh, grinder won't vibrate as much as an aluminum oxide wheel, which uh, stone wheels are cast and as a result they, they have some uneven weight distribution and they tend, tend to vibrate. You don't have that, that issue with a CBN wheel. The abrasive in a conventional vitrified cast wheel on the other hand is mixed with a bonding matrix called the bond that holds the wheel together. Since both the bond and the abrasive rub on the tool as it's being, being ground, conventional wheels just don't cut as quickly and they get the tool hotter than the CBN wheel. Now a CBN wheel uh, never needs dressing so as you use a stone wheel it'll get embedded with particles from your your tools and you'll have to use some type of a dresser like this uh, diamond dresser to uh, clean off off the wheel and between that and sharpening it changes the, the shape of, of the wheel over time and, and it gets smaller but CBN wheels cut faster because the abrasive is sticking above above the surface and they ne never change shape and they never never need dressing. Aluminum oxide wheels are going to get smaller over time both from uh, grinding tools as well as uh, the dressing and as a result they're going to change and they're going to get smaller which means any jigs that you, that you use are going to have to be modified uh, from time to time as your wheel gets gets smaller. And As you know sharpening tools the key is repeatability so it's really a handy thing that, that the, you, your CBN wheel doesn't change shape so once you've got a jig set up you can make a repeated grind uh, every time. Aluminum oxide wheels uh, can be damaged uh, if, if you uh, drop the tool or you or drop the wheel or if you gouge the, the tool in there uh, in, in, incorrectly you can cause the wheel to to chip or, or, or to otherwise get damaged and when that occurs you dramatically increase the risk of the wheel exploding on you. That's why you always wear uh, eye protection and that's why for the stone wheels they have a shroud around it to enclose that, those particles should that, you know, and not a common event, uh, occur of the wheel actually exploding because it could ruin your day. CBN wheels are, are safer because they can't explode. CBN wheels will probably last a lifetime for a typical uh, hobby turner uh, like myself. I've been using uh, two different CBN wheels now for over 10 years and, and they're just like new with no, no problems whatsoever.
Let's talk about the materials that uh, CBN wheel is made of, the actual core. Uh, some of them are steel, some of them are aluminum. As this chart indicates, steel is stronger, but aluminum is plenty strong enough. It's 6061 aircraft aluminum. Uh, steel can rust, aluminum can corrode. Steel core is heavier with a little more strain on grinder uh, uh, startup, but if you've got a half a horsepower a grinder and the aluminum core is a little bit lighter and less startup strain on on the lighter grinders. Now for one horsepower grinder it's, it's insignificant uh, the difference in, in weight, uh, the impact on the grinder. While technically these statements are true, I've never experienced or heard of any problems with, with either on, on a CBN wheel. If you have, please leave it in the comments uh, below and share that with us. Neither provide a, a stronger or, or better uh, support for the, for the matrix. Let's compare the weights of these different wheels. This stone wheel weighs 3 pounds 7 ounces. My 80 grit has a steel core. This is from Wood Turner's Wonders. Uh, it weighs in at 6 pounds and 12 ounces. Almost twice this. The 180 grit from Buck Tool weighs in at 9 pounds and 11 ounces. And my Mega Square from uh, Wood Turner's Wonders that has an aluminum core, it weighs in at 4 pounds and 11 ounces. Does weight really matter? Well, I would say if you had two steel wheels, uh, there's certainly going to be a little slower start, a little more strain on your on a typical half horsepower. But I always I had two steel wheels mounted, and I always just got in the habit of giving it a spin before I turned it on, and never had a problem. My first uh, grinder, a half horsepower from Woodcraft, came with a 60 grit and a 120 grit wheel. Uh, the more recent one horsepower. Uh, grinder from Buck Tool came with an 80 grit and a 120 grit uh, stone wheel. Stone wheels generally don't come in much finer than 150 grit, but with CBN they go all the way up to uh, 600. Typically, uh, I, I use an 80 grit wheel for uh, reshape, resharpening. I use an 80 grit wheel for reshaping tools that are uh, really gotten out of shape. I do a lot of teaching and you get students coming in with tools that are just just it's just a mess and they, they take some work. The 80 grit does that a little bit better but if you don't do if you don't make tools don't do a lot of heavy grinding probably you could be you'd be just uh, perfectly happy with a, a 180 grit wheel. I did a rather unscientific test by just marking a 16th inch band uh, with a, a a sharpie on the end of a uh, grinder and I found that it took uh, 30 seconds to grind it away on the uh, 80 grit wheel and, and a minute on the 180 grit wheel. So it took twice as long, but it only took a minute. So, it, you know, 180 grit is it, going to work just, just fine. And I find that really to be the best grit for most common tool sharpening, in, in my opinion and in my experience. There's been a lot of hype recently on finer grit wheels giving you a finer uh, uh, edge. Uh, as a result of that hype, I did get a 600 grit wheel. I find out for me it, it just doesn't seem to work as well. I think for the typical turner you'd be better off with maybe uh, a 180 grit and, and or maybe a little bit finer, two, possibly 220. If you're going to get a second one, maybe maybe 350. Um, the large, the finer uh, grit, I, I'm not sure it gives you enough of an edge to make any difference. Chances are you're still going to have to uh, uh, run a piece of sandpaper over it. Uh, and it does get a little bit hotter because there's so much more matrix on the on the surface, so you got to have a really uh, light hand. The other issue with a, a 600 grit wheel, if you don't have your jig uh, set up where or your platform or your sharpening jig where you can exactly replicate uh, the surface of that uh, sharpening tool being right on the on the surface, it's going to take a while to to to, to regrind that bevel because of that fine. Uh, very fine grit. Close works for the coarser wheels, not so much for the fine wheels. Being off just a tiny bit can make for a lot longer uh, grinding time. Uh, the difference in, in placement of your uh, platform, for example, by one thirty seconds of an inch could affect the uh, bevel angle by as much as a uh, half a degree. You get a fine burr on a scraper with a 180 grit wheel, you're not going to get a, a, a very good burr on a, a 
600 grit wheel is just going to be too too fine. So if you're only getting one CBN wheel, I'd say get a get a 180, possibly a 220, and, and that'll accommodate 90% of your sharpening needs. You could always keep one aluminum oxide wheel for for your coarser occasional coarser grinding, or if you have to grind some metal that's not tool steel, uh, some softer metal that uh, you can dress the the stone wheel uh, if it gets embedded. You don't want to embed a really soft steel like a, or aluminum or copper or some softer metal, non-tool steel, on a CBN wheel because you could permanently damage it. Now, one thing to be aware of with CBN wheels, when they're brand new, they take a little bit of breaking in, maybe 10 minutes of, of use, but until they're broken in, they'll be a, little, little, uh, they'll be a lot more aggressive, uh, but they settle in pretty quick. If you're placing a wheel, make sure you check for the right, the, the arbor size for your grinder, the 5 8 inch. Uh, arbor size is the most common, but there are half an inch and three quarters and, and different sizes. So be sure you, you know what your uh, the, the arbor is that you're replacing the wheel for. You can get CBN wheels in one inch width or one and a half. I would say if you're going to buy a CBN, go ahead and spring for the uh, one and a half because when you're, let me show you, when you're using a bare grind, it's just a little bit easier for you to keep it, keep it centered on the wheel when you got a little wider wheel. preferences for the square edge uh, wheels, whether it's got a 3 8 inch matrix or a larger 1 inch uh, matrix. Uh, I generally don't have a need for this on the side, but for some folks uh, it's great to have that 1 inch, that one eighth, excuse, that one inch matrix because they'll sharpen a skew this way and get a very flat edge. Uh, I sharpen the skew on the front face with a slight concave, so that's not of a real advantage uh, to me. Having this sharp square profile is handy on sharpening certain types of uh, tools, such as this dovetail tool, to get in the, and get that that angle, or a, a recess uh, tool, or even a, a hooked hooked tool. The radius wheel can be hand, handy for certain things. Uh, for example, if you make uh, ring tools uh, to get that round inside, it works great for that, uh, but you don't need it to continue sharpening it. For that, you just sharpen the, each side flat, uh, but maybe you don't have a need for that. Uh, one of the uh, touted advantages is they, some people feel like it's easier to sharpen a round nose scraper because instead of swinging it in front of you with that handle, you, you can just, uh, is, you just go along that radius side like this and push it straight in front of you because I never learned to sharpen it that way it was of no real benefit uh, to me for sharpening a round nose scraper. The other use case which is very similar to that is, is the one used by Dave Ellsworth for sharpening these little small uh, hollowing bits the same way, he could, he could run that along the edge of the wheel on either side and not have to swing it around. Now, I never found that to be that useful, but, but he, uh, you, he mounted his semi-permanently in, uh, in the tool with CA glue, so it was a little harder to remove. My preference would be sharpening uh, on the square wheel using a jig. Let me show you. And I started sharpening those little uh, hollowing uh, bits uh, in this jig from John Jordan. It somewhat operates similar to the, the Vera grind in that it, it just pivots. And I just found this so much easier. Uh, but I use removable bits, so it's easy to take them in and out. I learned to sharpen my round nose scrapers uh, on the front of the wheel. Uh, by rotating it like this in front of me, it never really had a problem. Sometimes the handle occasionally gets in the way, and, and if you've got a tool that's uh, got a removable handle like these Carter & Son tools, it's, it's no problem at all to be able to, to rotate it like that. So I, I frankly haven't never saw the need for the round edge for sharpening uh, this type of tool. One thing to keep in mind with a radius wheel is because of that quarter inch, I think, radius on each side, you lose a quarter of an inch of flat, uh, flat surface here. So instead of having an inch and a half, 
you only have an inch and a quarter. Not a big deal, but something to consider. I've got another video where I talk about installing a sharp, the uh, one-way Wolverine sharpening system. You can uh, catch it, catch it here, uh, where I install a CBM wheel and I talk about the, the shroud. You don't, you need a shroud for a stone wheel, but generally you don't need a shroud for a, a CBM wheel because it's not going to explode. And generally. Uh, the wheel will not mount on the grinder with the shroud. Some instances it will, but in most instances it won't. So that's the skinny on the wheel profile. There's no right or wrong. It just depends on what your use case is. What is it you're going to sharpen and, and how often? Uh, I would say this radius uh, edge, I do use it occasionally, and it's on my uh, coarse wheel, the 80 grit, which is probably where I would use it the most for shape, shaping a, a, a tool like a, like a hook, hook tool. Um, other than that, I, would, I get far more use out of the, the square square edge. For me, your use case might be different. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Make it a little easier for other uh, like-minded wood turners to find this video. Anytime you're sharpening, I'd urge you to wear a respirator or a face uh, face mask, dust mask of some sort, because uh, whether you're getting stone particles and steel particles or just steel particles with a CBN wheel, it's not something you want to breathe. If you haven't purchased a grinder yet, I've got a couple of videos you might want to uh, check out. I've never met anybody that bought a CBN wheel for sharpening wood turning tools that regretted it. But it is a luxury, but it'll put a smile on your, your face. Just a reminder, I've got affiliate links in the shop notes uh, from time to time, including this one on CBN wheels and, and, and grinders. You don't pay extra by uh, clicking on affiliate link, but if you make a purchase, I'll get a small commission. And remember, Y'all stay safe. Come on back, you hear?